Hey, good morning, everyone. Brian Hoops here, Midwest Market Solutions. This is Market Insider TV and our opening commentary. It is Tuesday, October the 22nd. Good morning, everyone. Hope you had a good evening. Looking forward to today's trade activity. Uh, we'll look at the overnight markets here, and uh, we see dollar basically unchanged. It's down fractionally here. Stock market a little bit softer, while crude oil is firmer this morning. And uh, gold and silver pushing to new highs once again in the overnight trades. So a lot of this this buying I don't think subsides. It's uh, continuing kind of relentless buying interest dips meant to be bought in the metals markets as uh, kind of an inflationary hedge. As market is anticipating, um, looking forward to the election and the uh, spending afterwards would uh, push you know prices to an inflationary levels. Um, especially if we start to talk about interest rates being lowered already once and maybe being lowered even further, that could uh, push more inflationary uh, pressures to mounting as far as the U.S. economy goes. And so these are safe haven net estimates. Uh, in the grains, we're unchanged in corn, unchanged in soybeans, about as boring as you can get uh, overnight. Meanwhile, wheat down a couple cents in Chicago, Kansas City off one and a quarter. Chicago market is one that is breaking key support overnight, broke the uh, in trend indicator that we use, and uh, trading below key technical support in the night session. And that's one to keep an eye on is uh, Chicago wheat. It's uh, unlike corn and soybeans where it indicates where we've broken that uptrend, we're starting to see some softness um, in the wheat future. So let's uh, take a look here at uh, our trading day ahead and uh, what we have in store. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, Midwest Markets, and at Ryan Hoops for the latest market information. All right, um, not much change to the forecast in here. What U.S. weather is open, and that's going to allow active harvest. There is some rains in the forecast in the plains, a cold front coming through, uh, maybe a little bit of rain showers for next week. Uh, in here, you know, but harvest is, is progressing very, very nicely. Regular rains are forecast for this week in South America. Six, 10 day outlook has good rain showers as well. So that looks to keep rallies in check in the soybean and corn markets, despite these big export business uh, that we are receiving. It was a huge day yesterday. We'll probably see more again today, tomorrow. Um, but yeah, this, uh, it's, it's very strong export business, especially coming from Mexico, as they've been the best buyer of U.S. corn products. So corn harvest here in the U.S., 65% complete versus 59% last year. We broke the states down in your newsletter and uh, would invite you to take a look at that if you're interested in looking at it. You know, Iowa's the biggest uh, corn harvester, and they're 68% done. It's a very similar percentage across Illinois, Indiana, Minnesota, and Nebraska. Um, Missouri's 80% done with corn harvest, South Dakota's 56, North Dakota's 47. So there, there's where your states maybe are, are lagging in a couple areas in the north, which you would expect. Soybean harvest, 81% done versus 76 last year. Again, uh, the ice states, 91% done in Iowa. But Illinois, 76, Indiana, 75, Nebraska, 85, Minnesota, 95. And uh, North Dakota, about 89% done. So a lot of soybean crop being done up north and that is uh what you would expect as for a normal pattern winter wheat seeding 73 percent done now this is a little bit interesting where missouri is only 45 percent done and uh kansas 78 percent oklahoma 55 texas 65 some of those really dry areas like missouri oklahoma texas waiting for rain showers to develop they can wait a little bit longer because the longer growing season it's uh you know areas like uh, the Dakotas and Nebraska, where they've had a little bit more moisture, but it's still very dry. But they've had more moisture, and they put that crop in the ground trying to get a, a stand established before dormancy sets in. Coming up Friday, November grain options, they expire, and that's a big market mover, I think, uh, potentially. as uh, There's a lot of options that will go off the board on Friday, and a lot of uh, activity will be centered around that option expiration. This week's Cattle Facts Show list. It's down 7,500 head, 224,000 head on the show list. That's a pretty friendly number, pretty tight numbers there on the show list. Should lead us to higher cash trade. Packer margins are a positive $75 a head as cutout values continue to push higher. And box beef sales are very strong. Reported last night, 1,322 loads of box beef sold last week. That's 385% of the prior week, 146% of the same week a year ago. So now, our total to date... 
uh, which is only a thousand below a year ago. So we've really narrowed the spread between our sales that we had seen to where we're at right now. We're only three percent behind year ago levels. That's um, improvement for for sure, and a lot of it had to do with cheaper prices. But prices have rebounded here. We're still making good sales. This should lead to some stronger cash trade this week, as well as uh, stronger futures markets, in my opinion. I'm going to sign off here, but uh, wish you a good day. We'll look for higher cattle prices, grains. I think we chop around. Downside looks to be led by the wheat market, uh, as we see a little bit of fun selling coming into place. Um, grains will react to these export business numbers that are expected to come out around 8 o'clock. We'll uh, text you and send it out on uh, Twitter. So hope you have a, you know, you're signed up for those services. Have a great day and good luck and good trading.